footballing and then you you play with newly found vigor. Whereas opposed to like you go for a trade and you get dumpstered. You just get murdered. It's like, alright, this game's over. Uh, the mentality shift uh, can be there so quickly. And really interesting too is we get into picks and bans here. These bans are coming out so rapidly. Mickey's bar taken off the table. The Talia, a popular ban against Spy recently. There must be being we've seen it played internationally. Yeah. It must be being played as Crims as well. They must know Senkok. Yeah, Senkok still also plays on his solo queue account, so you can definitely track it. Um, you just uh, yeah, Talia is just a strong champion if you master it. You need to put in some time. That is the problem. We see both uh, honestly top supports for these players taking off the table. So that means we likely will end up seeing at least a Braum on one of the sides. This is really interesting. Malzahar taken off the table as well. This is something that has been a bit of a terror in solo queue internationally, but not something we've seen competitively whatsoever. And it has left open Vladimir. Yeah. Despite the nerfs on this patch, Vladimir still a, a horrifying pick to play against. I'm really surprised that they let this through. The young Vlad, ba uh, the young Mal's ban to give enemy first pick Vladimir. That's bold. Probably means that Spice is going for another Anivia comp. Um, that's been their go-to answer to Vladimir. Maybe with the slight little tweaks, laning phase is even more bearable. And of course, I mean, looking at the Anivia, three for three on games thus far. So rather two for two for Senkux, doing very well overall. But Trashy also getting his hands on this Nidalee. Yep. Always a pick we're excited to see. This guy can be such a huge force. But at the same time, I mean, he had one or two rough games on it as well. Yeah, he's gone back and forth. Stylistically, Trashy's a bit of a utility jungler where he um, sacrifices his time and farm to get other lanes ahead. On Nidalee, that's the opposite style you need to play. So we need to see if Spice can shift styles on a game basis. That's also the mark of a great team heading into playoffs because you need to be able to uh, find different champions to fit your style, but then you also need to cater your style around the champions that you end up picking. And obviously, Nidalee, high aggro jungler, looks for duels, wants pushing lanes uh, to navigate in between. They can still fix it because they have counter pick support uh, and they play into a melee support. So if they play like an aggro mid lane, maybe a Cassio can come out, then uh, they can give Trashy the liberty to move in between those lanes and counter jungle. Could be something very handy to have, of course. The grounded effect for Cassio as well, really limiting the opportunities for Betsy. Make any maneuverable options in the mid lane. Interesting composition coming in here from Rocket. Not a whole ton of CC quite yet. Picking up the Braum early, prioritizing that. But Graves, Vladimir, these are not very pick-focused champions. Yeah, I mean, Vladimir, you will always have a lack of CC when you pick it up early because the champion, but the champions are so strong. So if you get some on your support, that's great. And then maybe on your top lane, I think you're good uh, overall. Graves just has a buff of damage. This will be very interesting to see if this comes out. Oh, inst almost instantly locked in here. Cassidy in the mid lane for Senkux. We did see one game of it on the other stream in the hands of Power of Evil, but it ah. did not go quite so well. Nami coming in as the counter pick to Braum. See, I get it, but I hate Cassidy. When I look at units like Synergy, like Cassidy and Nidalee as like a jungle mid combination sounds like utterly horrible. Uh, Vladimir Graves is much better though on the other side. Um, Spice is going for one of those comps. Where, yeah, you're running relatively low, low wave there. You're going to be committing to 1 through 1 regardless. But you have a weak mid uh, mid 3 because you have 3 ranged people. You know? So you have to know that they're going to pick a top laner. That's going to go into one of the side lanes. You kind of have Nidalee, Nami, Sivir sitting in the mid lane. So the point I'm trying to make is spicing the snowball. If they get behind, they're going to have a really rough mid game. Very gonna be really interesting. You see the hover over on Scion here. I'm excited about this because this is Mickey's like one trick support option, but Nami's already locked in, so he's just hovering it to give me a bit of a giggle here. Interesting choice coming in from Rock Hat. They have been tunneling on comfort picks for Parang for so long. It's not the Jace today, but it is the Echo, and they're one of the few teams that, despite the nerfs, continue to just pull it out time and time again. Yeah, blind Echo into Aurelia. Um, I think that's a really rough matchup. I feel like Aurelia should be able to take that one home. Um, so, looking at the goals here, with the Ghost and Vladimir that you need, you're kind of running a 1-4 uh, on Rocket. They have some skirmish potential here. Um, I think they need a lane swap early, though. I think they're, they're committing to this lane swap early, because they will get dumpstered in terms of pressure. Also, lane swaps neutralize Nidalee a tiny bit. Um, but she can't really start yeah. dueling enemy jungler. The map gets divided half and half. You get yeah. maybe a couple of camps extra, but that's it. Of course, obligated to show up for those those tower pushing moments. Much more predictable pathing overall. Not quite as much flexibility. Rarely though, because remember junglers don't like, spend that much time actually hitting the turrets. They're yeah. constantly clearing camps because double junglers removed. The junglers are like solely jungling right now, and top laners are more joining there. Um, yeah, let's see how good uh, Rocket's ability to get a lane swap is, because otherwise I think lanes, standard lanes is going to be rough. And really going to be interesting to see how Rocket has improved. Of course, talk to Grabs. He thinks things are better, but at the same time, how quickly will this mentality fall apart if they're not able to pull ahead here? What's he going to say, though? 
you know what? Nah, we're going down. We're going to lose. I expect us to go 0-4 this week. You know, I've never had a coach say things weren't looking great or progress wasn't made or scrims weren't at least okay. So I always take that with a pinch of salt. Well, if you were keeping the faith in Rocket, yeah, you can head on over to Twitter. Tweet at LOE Sports, hashtag ROC win. But I think Splice are going to bring it home with this Cassidy pick in the mid lane. Tweet out hashtag SPY win. Getting ready, gearing up. You ready, Sifa? I'm so ready, Prepper. How, how ready? 100% ready. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, game one in our second series of the day, Rock Hat and Splice leaving the base. It's not going to be a whole lot of action here yeah. in the first 30 seconds, but we will get to learn the uh, greatest there, thing. There might be, because we're seeing like a death ball move out of Rock Hat when you see that one big sweeping unit. Guess what? See, father looking for a lane swap. Oh, and no. maybe they find a pick. You know, Exhaust, we've seen Yellowstar do this. Q flash into Exhaust is a uh, free kill. Here. Oh, trashy. It's a bit too far. Needs to be close. Hey, I mean, out. knows this is coming. Rock going to move it anyway. They want the vision. They want to know exactly what's happening in Splice's side of the jungle. But as you said, telegraphing the lane swap. Yep. Splice responding on the opposite side with some vision of their own. Ooh, Wunder hiding in the top lane. I wonder if he's going for the cheeky uh, steal the experience strat that, who was it? Was it Team Impulse? Ah. Yeah, yeah. No, I was. What were they called before? Jesus Christ, I always forget. <laughs> I was in NA. Top laner stood the stuck. The first there. time we saw that strategy, we hit in the bush until he yeah. got level two and then like ran away. I don't even remember his name. Like, oh, Impact? Was he Impact? Must. Minions has spawned. No. It was Impact. It was that confirmation. <laughs> I just act like I'm thinking and I just wait. I'm like, Spellsy, this is the moment where you whisper it into my ear and Spellsy went Impact. I'm like, okay, it was Impact. Asking you shall receive from the God of Stats. Oh, I'll eventually get it to you. But it's the reverse mind game. It's the Swaparoni into that. Uh, JK, we're kidding. We'll go bot anyway. So Rocket right now was hoping that Splice would match them and run top. And they find out standard lanes anyways. So complete information here. These camps are so late. Let's see what the action is. Nami and Siv are moving in to potentially contest, but it looks like they're going to no, back no. off. They're moving into insta shoved away, which means if they did big crook, they would have lost speed to the turret. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying there. Which means at the end of the day, Rock Hat only grabbing the one small Krug. Yeah. May even out some of the experience differential, but a lot of this is going to come down to steal back last hitting proficiency under the tower. He's good Co though. Kabi and Mickey, as you said, you can see contesting just about every creep, really not wanting to give uh, steal back the opportunity to last hit for free. Uh, Ray's helping here where he can, so all CS goes. First wave's easy though, it's once this bubble comes online for Mickey, that's when he can start really contesting, because you just wait for enemy AD carry to walk up. And as he wants to lock into the auto attack frame, you bubble him. And like has to dash out, Mr. CS. You can see he has level two before steal back. Maybe an opportunity to, to force an ability here. And the opportunity locked in, as you said, and predicted. Perfect call on the bottom lane trades here. Rocket continuing to be set behind. You can already see a bit of a CS differential starting to develop. Steal back, struggling on those last few hits. Ah, doing a good job though, because there wasn't no damage on the back end of that bubble. Only one CS denied. You can stay down like once he has a wave, it's manageable. Your mid lane, complete trade fest coming on. Yeah, of course, Cassidy not known to be much of a threat here. Going to be kind of relegated to farming up under the tower as well. Vladimir, relatively easy for him to pressure out. But now the question is, where is Trashy going to go? Uh, he wanted to go for the cheese here, but Airwax adjusted his path, it seems like. He went blue into wolves. Um, or wolves into blue, regardless what order he did. And then he skipped over to red. Uh, if uh, Graves would have committed to clearing all three camps and then went to red buff. Trashy would have either stolen it away or been waiting for him to give him in there. So this is, when you play a weaker matchup, you gotta do one camp and two buffs in one go. If you go for any other order, you will risk getting out jungle. It's the same in like elite matchups too. And actually speaking of that, something we did see, I believe, in Unicorn of Love set versus H2K. We saw move doing the very same thing, adapting his pathing yeah. to get in the early aggressive invades. And yup, exactly. Move moved in and he just, uh, it was in the Elise Gragas matchup. The Elise was slightly quicker, Gragas was low HP, move contested on Red Buff. Yankos was on the back foot from the get-go there. Here. Trading just continuing to come out across lanes. No real break point quite yet, but pressure advantage definitely in favor of Splice here on the bottom side. Yeah, and now the problem is like Raze needs to tap these creeps once in a while, but every time he does, you know, he's gonna start to take damage. And then the bubble is so easy to land because Rom Shield absorbs bubbles. It's like a sponge. If you hit it at the left side, Right, so it doesn't matter, it gets centered on the Braum, and if he's then too close to his AD carry, the AoE still applies. So that's, uh, it's sometimes it's better for Braum to not shield bubbles and just let people walk out of them. 
Going to have to see if that's something that Raze is aware of, how he adapts to this matchup, if he can kind of outplay mechanically here, because so far, they're not looking very favorable. Although no real losses on either side. Senkux gets aggressive. Once again, trade across the map. I mean, what... What is the breakpoint here? When do these teams start to look for greater advantages, or are we just waiting for the impact from the junglers? Um, I mean, eventually you get out sustained, depending on how much mana region Mickey's running and how efficient his sustain is. Like, you can just track potions, right? Mickey's sitting on three pots, Brahms on zero. Which means if this kind of pattern keeps going on, and Kobe gets a couple spells to down, eventually there will be a point where Rocket has to base, and Spice doesn't. Or the tower goes down. Now we see Wunder. Or, ooh, flash for flash, praying just a little bit quicker on the reflexes there. But, uh, but he predicted it. He knows that after one flash out, he drops, so he has to preempt the flash and hope that Wunder is actually going to commit for a flash. Because you can't reactively flash, because um, the way flash works in, in, with melee attacks is if you flash and the auto attack is traveling, and if you flash where you're still seeing, it will land. If you flash into Fog of War, it'll get canceled. Uh, obviously, in lane, there's nobody nowhere to flash to Fog of War, so you need to preemptively go for your flash there. Wonder teleporting back into lane, but not the best choice. Minions counting this trade against him and a sudden shift in power here. TP's flashes both used on the top side. Gonna see if the junglers want to pay some attention up there. I mean, this, out of all the matchups, it seems like mid and bottom lane are so stalled out. And maybe it's a similar story for top, but I feel like the potential for these explosive engages is definitely yeah. there. We're looking at some acceleration on the map here though. So first back came from push. Kabe and Mickey, they got their BF sword, they're running back now, they're picking the back end of that wave. This is where they get a small extra CS advantage, because when Lucian's going to the base, they could actually uh, look for a dragon attempt there if Trashy was on the other side of the map. But Trashy's actually electing to go for some counter jungling, but he's getting collapsed on. Got three members moving in, Vladimir, Graves, Echo. not a lot of reliable CC. It's gonna be a splash probably. Moving out, trying not to use it as long as possible, but Echo's still very difficult to get away from. Trashy actually just gonna walk out of that one in the end. All right, good job by him. Calm and collected, doesn't panic. And they steal away some advantages. That's what Spice is doing in this early game. They're fine scaling, they don't really... Vladimir is a threat in the late game, but casting on the side lane is a really strong tool to deal with that as well. And I mean, with almost no reliable hard CC, that cast is gonna be Pretty unstoppable if he ever manages to get ahead here. Yeah, I like the little combo. Send out the Q from Kabe to force race to put up a shield and then obviously follow with a bubble. It's a close onto both. But it's very mana intensive here. Kabe and Mickey limited by their mana pools at times to truly out sustain this lane. Still did a phenomenal job because he got his BF. It doesn't matter if your 10 CS is down, as long as you're on the same tier of items. If you go pickaxe into BF sword, oh, you're struggling. Uh, it also means he's not going for the traditional Yomus. Adapting a little bit here, the rapid fire cannon, depend on what he wants to do. Wonder, fancy footwork to make his way out of that situation. Not too happy with the trade. Some damage down on the flank, but it's just an absolute bloodbath here on the top. No junglers present. Yeah, they did a great job of leaving these exit creeps. Um, so you can always maneuver around in the lane. That's what you want to do as well, yeah. Fuse your opponent. Airwax. Interesting timing. No, because he's going to ulti back to lane, right? There he is. Pop, pop. I think one team teleports down. <laughs> nope. The order right now. There's more. That was always my favorite part about Echo. It makes me sad because you don't get to do the sweet damaging ultimates, but the cheeky strat of the back quick buy, double TP. Yep. Or you just b back in full vision and get the enemy team to commit and you get the outplay on MSI. I don't know if we're going to see that today, but I mean, Parang probably our most experienced. Echo player on the stage, at least for this season. Continues to jam it out every single time he gets the opportunity. I feel like Trashy moving in, trying to make more opportunities for the team, but Rocket just continue to own this side of the table. Yeah, let's be honest. This game is a bit of a snoozer, so yep. we got to look into details and explain maybe something you can learn. Um, first example, Pink Ward in bottom lane. Why don't you put it in the river? Why put you in lane? Because when you play pushing lanes like Sivir and Nami, that ward right there, that's the only counter usually, because Enemy supports will sneak in a trinket and you'll get teleported upon and you have uh, really oh, like that. close combat style here. Kabe trying to sneak tag. in the TP on the hunt burn. No TP coming through. Two stacks four. Kabe could spell shield to yeah. block that out. Okay. They're running back though. No, no, no. Don't take flash out. Still gonna get hit. Tidal wave comes in, not gonna hit airwax. Is he gonna dash forward? Smoke string goes down. Alti, oh. not enough. Rocket, so close to pulling out a kill mm -hmm. there. I feel like Airwax could have gotten a kill there with Red Buff Graves. I think he should have just extended into the tower, kept the flying red buffs there. Really good 
Engaged by Ray, he's on the back end of that play. But yes, you're afraid of a teleport. So if there's a teleport behind you there, you fail. So that's why you put the big board in lane. And you deprioritize River Vision. Honestly, you have to respect Fog of War there. That was a mistake from Spice. But good aggression there from Rocket. And the first gank leads to a dragon. Spice looking to cross map with a Rift Herald. Trade the objectives here, but the big question is, is this Ocean Break going to be worth more than the Rift Barrel? The permanent buff for sure, but the 20 minutes where Aurelia has advantage could be hell for Parang on the top side of the map. Already kind of struggling in those exchanges, and as Aurelia gets closer and closer to that Trinity Force, it definitely does not get easy. Yeah, good split push buff here, and that's also one of the win conditions for Splice getting Wunder ahead, making sure he stays in the game. If he has dueling priority of dueling advantage over a Parang, puts so much pressure on the map. Exactly where they want to be, especially moving forward with the split push Cassidy. And getting that 1 3 1 up and running. So far, I think you said it best, this user. This game's yeah. about farm. I mean, oh, we're waiting with bated breath. Anticipation <laughs> is the key word. <laughs> I can tell. Asifa's leaning over again. I get excited. He's man. getting look, closer. His, look, his like... nose increasingly gets closer to the screen every time the game goes on. Like So by 20 minutes, he'll literally be on the screen praying for some action. You gotta say, I'm, I'm a play-by-play. -play. I'm like the hype man in any rap track. I li like I need to wait for you to say something so I can just go yeah, yeah! <laughs> in the background. You know what I mean? So you gotta you gotta give me gotta give me my shot here. Yeah. When do I get to go yeah? Yeah, right here. <laughs> You're going in. Nope. No. Take it. <laughs> Frank, not coming out. Those trades my caught. That was not favorable whatsoever. A power rift build up in addition to that sheen. I mean, we have to judge these comps though. Splice. Because they're playing a 1-3-1 that works well with like, if all lanes get ahead, they have like, no engage. Like, Kassan jumping in and Aurelia flanking is their engage. So they're, they're playing a style similar to Fnatic, but they're playing it into a team that has Vladimir on the other side. And that gets complicated, you know, because it's pretty yeah. scaling flat. Not, and I mean, pretty scary team to jump into in any circumstance. Braum there for great disengage, Echo as well with parallel conversions. If you ever get that team fight set up. Oh, look at the fight here. This is why I love off-rolling on Aurelia too, because you get rewarded for taking damage. Like once you drop low enough, it's like, yep. oh, yeah, you just unlocked my trap card. <laughs> Equilibrium Strike. I totally meant to be this low in HP. I, I was losing these trades on purpose. I feel like you must have off-rolled in the top at least once or twice in solo queue. You're like, guys, guys, I was just trying to set up the Equilibrium Strike, I yeah. swear. <laughs> you guys don't understand. I was uh, like two plays ahead of you. Oh, hopping back in. Wonder, that's a little greedy. Starting to get aggressive. There's that low health bar. Spear lands. Great connect coming in. No ultimate. That's going to be first blood. I tell you, man. Equilibrium strike. Set up. Baited and outsmarted in the top lane. I personally think Wunder has been watching some of my Aurelia games. <laughs> I feel like every week we cast together, your ego just gets a little, little bigger. It's the oh. Challenger, man. Ever since you got back to Challenger. I'm actually boss right now. <laughs> Send Cooks. In and out, and Send Cooks. Is he gonna drop? Not quite enough from the Hemoplex. Betsy oh. wants more. Flash in. Transfusion. Takes the last remaining drop. Puts the blood. Sucks it out of Send Cooks' body. Let me get let me just yeah. Let me sneak in there. Trashy now trying to clear out these creeps as best he can. Knows the tower's already set to fall due to the earlier pressure. No action. Not gonna let that happen. He's waiting in the bush. Has the pink ward. Don't think we're going to see action here on the bottom side. Too much elsewhere on the map. Yeah, because there's TP advantage. Frank's TP is down. They need a deep ward in, but the dueling power on six is actually getting quite strong here because Waze and Steelbank did such a good job at staying even. They actually have the all-in potential. Um, Kobe and Mikix can't out poke, out sustain because the threat of all-in is just too large whenever they go for poke. Because all it takes is one all attack for Q to connect from. Raise combined with the exhaust and a call into the face, and both members drop there. So Spice right now in the bot lane, playing more in the back foot. Yeah, but Trashy moving in to try to relieve some of the pressure here. Yeah. We're seeing Raze and Steel back off. And this enables the sustain again right now because it, they can just go zone him off and then go for this turret. So I really like this move from Trashy showing up in this lane because otherwise, Raze and Kabi, or Mickey and Kabi, were forced to play so much farther back in the lane. And a really good choice overall. Nets in the tower. No cross map response coming in from Rocket because their top lane's already losing and Airwax is just too slow on the rotation. Yup, and now they can put Nami Sivir in the mid lane. Maybe steal a red buff here. And it goes to Airwax. And Kassan can go to a side lane. And he doesn't care if he's pushed in because he can just hold on the turret. Happy to be there. You can see the 30 CS differential just about here in the mid lane. Betsy completely dominating the exchange here, making it hard for Kassadin to farm. But now that Kassadin's free on the side lane, how many resources is he going to be able to grab? I mean, he needs to catch up, but this is still a counterpick matchup. This is a donated Vladimir on first rotation blue side getting counterpicked in essence 
and then going 30 CS down, so that's a big mistake, uh, I guess, from Splice. Maybe not working out the way they want, or maybe they're just ramping up for late game, but probably not the best idea to do that into a Vladimir. Yeah, not the person you want to be giving all that CS away to. He still zones them 2v1. Oh, moving in. Rockhat are just going to be able to get this one back. What is this actually worth? TP coming in. Senkux maybe looking for the setup here. Steal back, not too scared. We'll be able to see it. Hot board from Senkux. Slow down. My god, Wonder does so much damage, but is it going to be enough? Tidal wave on the backside. Colin gets interrupted at least. Airwax, Willy drops. Senkux moving forward. Action continues to happen. Mickey getting cheeky. Wants a little bit more. Senkux, one more rip walk. Will he be able to grab another? This is the two for the price of one. Hops forward, gets it. Double kill for the mid laner. You wanted him to get a lead, and he finds it. The 15 minute mark. Yeah, sadly, they did not see the Aurelia coming, so she did all her damage before the exhaust was applied. Obviously, then the chase happened, and honestly, surprised that that worked out. Really good uh, realization that teleport was still in cooldown for Parang, so it's a, a difference of like 30 seconds where Spice capitalized. If they try the same play with Parang's teleport up, it will horribly backfire. So, good awareness and good way out of a tough situation because mid was pressured, bot was pressured, outnumbered. Look at this again, you know, Wunder unspotted here, and right here, bam, damage applies, now the exhaust comes in, it's slightly too late, and then the turnaround is not enough, because Wunder flashes out, and then Sivir gets kind of herded to the bot lane, they, they only have one way to go, because Vladimir was zoning them, and then Trashy and Kobe, they show up just in case. And I really like this play coming in from Splice because you saw Senkux go in and then half a second later Wonder comes in and it just felt like there was no right oh. way to focus as they collapse. Yeah, but you know. You know when Cassian jumps in that there is somebody coming that you forgot to account for. That's a momentary panic as you try to figure it out here. Ooh. So we're talking about Betsy can 2v1 this. Uh, Saber Nami not the strongest. And later on, Trashy's here too. Triple range with no hard CC. Vladimir can actually do a lot. Um, kind of 3v1 damage here. And then the other two you want will be heavily handling one here by, by Rocket in the bot lane. Yeah, gonna be easy to get this one, but with Trashy in the mid lane, are they actually gonna be able to make an impact on this tower? So far, it does not look like it. You know, Trashy, we were talking about him needing to make an early game impact on this Nidalee. Yes, he has a CS advantage and that kill, but we're seeing Rocket kind of come back, making yeah. plays of their own. They're holding in mid, but look at it. Spice is translating their advantage, you know, it was like we're pushing mid, we're rotating top. And right now, Parang back top, damage is done. They don't need to physically move top. They just make use of Fog of War. And look at Parang, he will maybe walk up once he sees them in mid lane, but it's already too late. Power's lost. So that's how you trade advantages. Spice are actually very aware of how to play the entire map at once. Push mid, move it to Fog of War, top backs off, take tower, move back mid to hold. Like, don't commit to the play entirely. Hold your turret here. I like it. I mean, Spice developing as a team over the course of this season, making smart plays. Betsy potentially in trouble. Chemo flag out, Trashy not done yet. That's enough, good pull. Consistent spear landing, is he gonna go in? He wants it. No, no, he just wants to zone him out. There's also a window on the, on the side flanking, but they have no vision in that fog of war, so you need to be careful. Exit right. wolf gets used. Frank's TP up as well. Someone's gonna have to stop Urelia on the top side, but Kavi is out of mana. Maybe the end for the push in the mid lane. But both teams looking to set up. Splice well, continually one step ahead, however. The 3k goal lead they built up. I mean, pretty much all of them outplaying Rockat across the map. Yeah, just quicker moves here, leveraging the fact that you can get advantages by simply pushing away quicker than your opponent. Now, Vladimir is put on side wave duty because Lucian doesn't play that well on the long lane. And it wants to be mid two. All the AD carries want to be mid these days. Going back to the old days. I know, mid. season one. But it's not even season one. They want to farm and get comfortable in the bottom lane, and then they want to come. Pampered AD carry. <laughs> live such a life of privilege. You have an entire person dedicated to keeping you safe. Back in my day, we shared farming in bot lane. We were like, the Relic Jarvan. <laughs> I remember those days. I, I held on to those days for a long time. The like Jarvan Lee Sin kill lanes. People were not a fan of playing. Actually, I don't think Jarvan was out in the time where that bot lane duo was even a meta. No, oh, I wasn't. I was talking purely about choosing oh. the later seasons. <laughs> Who are those people? Play the Zillion Siren, man. Bomb delivery system on the creeps. That's the new hype. I gotta be honest, that's a very new. I thought you meant like old school Scion, where it's just like stunned into. I was like, double bomb didn't. I don't think it used to, you know. No, no, no. See just put a bomb on a creep and you say, oop. Sir, this is your creep you're looking for? <laughs> Wonder continue to trade out here. Parang. Nah, he just. He's dialing in, but turns out it's just a Parang call. Oh no. It's not what you want. 
Oh no, may have been just a prank though overall. Wonder jumping forward, trying to get something else in the end. Is he gonna be able to kill back? Yes! My god, 2v1 and he still gets a kill. It was just a social experiment, but it was successful. One for one still drawing Vladimir away. And now in the mid lane, it's gonna get so much harder. Cast and gonna be able to clear out the side waves. There's no pressure anywhere else on the map for Splice, so they didn't lose anything in the end, but the one for one exchange, still great for the team. Yeah, surprised that. Senkirk's honestly didn't path Myth to force here. Uh, maybe get the tower down, but he's just taking valuable side lane CS here. Let's watch that again. Wounded goes in, then out. And again, his Q's now on cooldown because he failed on that creep. And then he gets in for a uh, finish here, forcing Frank's ultimate. Does a good flash to dodge that damage. Forces Bessie's flash too. He's back up, obviously, resetting. Very well played by Wunder. Yeah, the creep manipulation here is excellent. Kabi taking a lot of damage, though. TP coming in. Splice need to end this fight quickly. And now Senkuk shows up on the back line. Airwax drops. They're moving forward. Betsy's running. Ghost is up. Is Wonder going to be fast enough? Does not look like it. Splice hungry for blood. Maybe looking for more. But Rock Cat are going to be able to make it to safety. Yeah, making use of some lingering wards there with another pick off here. The mobility from this cast and Nami coming in. And now they go for the pressure here. 4v5. Rockhead continuously being put on the back foot by honestly a proactive splice. Vladimir already backed out. It looks like they're going to have to give up this turret. Betsy nowhere to be seen. One set to fall. Decent damage coming out. Wonder goes in. What? I'm consistently surprised by Aurelia damage. You are the hype man. I. Yeah. What? Yeah. I mean, clearly a hype on uh, Aurelia damage is the only hype that I need because I'm still. I've seen it enough in my days, man. I know. Wicked showed me the light. <laughs> Didn't matter the meta. Wicked had a pick, and no matter what happened. Despite, I, no matter how much this character gets nerfed, she finds a way back every time, Krepo. She's determined. Now, of course, Rockhead backing off. Things not looking good for the team thus far. 3k difference. I mean, in Rockhead's world, this is probably like, bah. Last week we were behind 4,000 gold, guys. Keep smiling. The silver lining. Silver lining. <laughs> Gotta look for that silver lining on the Cloud Dragon. And, and things one look worse. <laughs> I mean, they've got one. They've got an ocean, too. Building themselves a paradise retreat here via dragons. Conceded objectives. Comfort Dragon. The Comfort Dragon. <laughs> Some people have got, like, what, mashed potatoes and gravy. I don't know what the... The Belgian comfort food is fries. Fries, that makes sense. That was my experience. Fries and anything deep fried. <laughs> I feel like, despite our differences and where we're from, our cultural food is, is so very similar. Hey man, I lived in the States for a while. <laughs> I, I am no stranger to the comfort of deep fried uh, comfort. <laughs> we deep fry everything in America Twinkies, Oreos, Snickers bars. I had chicken and waffles, man. The only reason we're talking about this is because. Guys, I gotta be very honest with you. I'm really hungry right now. <laughs> and I'm just thinking back of the chicken and waffles I had in the States. It was magnificent. Also, it doesn't help that this game's rather slow. Yeah, of course. I mean, Rocket steadily falling behind. But it's still only a 2k gold difference in Splice. They're trying to get the split push rolling, but we haven't seen too much come of it just yet. They're but clearly in the lead. Yeah, they're, they're, they're putting deposits down, though, for the cash in later. They're yeah. getting the vision control on the bottom side of the map. They can choose to swing map control to the other side. They're only playing with one side stone. Slow and steady. Oh. How much damage does Aurelia do to Graves? I'm not what? gonna, I'm not gonna scream this right part. <laughs> what? Is this my... I'd take it. Get a little bit on it. But... Oh, Betsy, oh, no. mistake. And that's not what at all what you want. Pull out, but it doesn't look like it's gonna be enough. Wonder actually in trouble. Protobelt forward wave along the back side, and Rockhead are able to pick that up. Dragon drops to Splice, but was it worth the exchange? Yeah, Splice shooting at kind of two fronts at once here. Wunder going in for the pickup where he was on the ward. You always need to make sure that you want to ward. And then Vladimir was slightly low, so Betsy had to um, kind of avoid dealing damage because honestly, then Wunder wasn't going to hit him because Wunder was really looking for the equilibrium strike, but uh, failed to one shot. Betsy still got his pull off. And yeah, a little over aggressive here from Splice. Trying to get too many things at once. A little greedy play. Still get Dragon though. Yeah, and of course, going to be that Infernal. So relatively powerful overall for the team, especially with the lead that they've built up. Especially with that Aurelia in the top lane, having that Ma, having those double damage items. Yeah, you always want to go two double, uh, two damage items, and then generally you often do tank if you're an Aurelia player. Does Ma count as a damage item or a tank item? It's, it's a hybrid. I think it's plenty of damage. So at this point, full tank, cloth armor, maybe signaling. 
something else. Maybe looking to max out that CDR. Frozen heart. Yeah, maybe just get random wins so you can stick to enemy AD carry. We'll slow them down. Any ability to kind of slow down your opponents always great too. Also, it gives you raw health because you don't want to up into one stat too deeply. So you're like, yeah, guys, AD carry's gonna kill me. Not finding this Vladimir personally. <laughs> Somebody else deal with that. Well, the other thing too is like if you itemize too deeply into health or too deeply into armor, it's like, yeah, guys, I have 500 armor. Maybe you have a thousand health. Yeah. <laughs> like you're you're gonna die. Doesn't work out quite like you think it does. The diminishing returns are real. Betsy. I mean, pretty bravely moving forward in this jungle. Knows that he has the pool available. Sees enough members of Splice. And again, not perfect war clear here. So they need to work on bringing more pink wards to the table. Obviously, they, they'll figure it out. Once people start... You can tell whether it brushes water or not by people's movement patterns. Unless they're really good actors. Wonder. Figuring it out pretty quickly. The Rocket were not good actors in that circumstance. Yeah. Realizes the bush is warded. Is going to walk away. Split bush. 1-3-1. One, one. What we expected here. Rocket looking for a pick off. Honestly, it's gonna take one more back from Spice, I think, to bring more pink wards to the tables. So then you have, like, at least a plausible idea that Baron's clean. Set up a decent amount of vision around the Baron area and to kind of support the Cassidy and split push thus far. Rally on the bottom side as yeah. well. But the problem is they don't see the blue trinket that's parked right in front of Nasher. And that's gonna stay there forever until it's cleared up. So maybe Trashy can find it right now. And that's gonna shape, shift the movement patterns here from. Rockat, they're, they're sweeping inefficiently. You always want to be sweeping in pairs. So one guy reveals, the other guy hits. So you can keep moving on. If you have to slow down and actually all attack, you'll end up clearing one ward that will just get replaced right after. Complete vision denial is paramount for a good Baron bait. And now finally the Trink is taken down here. Now there's good vision denial. But look, they're, they're sweeping the same area they just swept here. So now they're all on cooldown. But they can punish, and now Rockat's forced to kind of face check. Howard not going to come out. Protobelt moves forward. Healing reduction comes in from the Morellos, but the fight looks like it may be started. Farang knocked up. Great bubble moving forward. Who's going to be able to get it? Wonders in the team. He's knocked up. He's knocked out of the fight. Airwax has the damage. Snap back from Parang. He's looking for more, but he's straight too far forward. Isn't going to go down, or is he? Ignite ticking. Flash from Kabi forward. Steal back. Trying to get something back. Kabi in trouble. Is he alive? Why won't he oh, die? Go what? Airwax commits to get the kill back, but that was a clean fight coming in from Splice. God, I just, what a fight. Just gonna nitpick. Yamato's always looking at the camera. Like, we see Daylor is like intensely really staring at the screen. What went right, what went wrong. I Yamato's feel like, like it's my time to shine, boys. Not I feel like head. Yamato knows. He of course like, he knows. He, know, he like, they tap on the soldier, like, hey, your team is body and people. Turn around real quick. He's like, yeah. He's the hype man. He's the hype man. <laughs> Splice, though, an insane team fight. I can't wait to watch no. that one again because. Kabi should have died. Kabi should have died. There's no way. Wonder blew up immediately, and Splice still came out ahead. Yeah, just like the commit here is good, the initial pickoff. But the problem is they're going into a choke point, and they're not bringing as much CC and damage denial to the table here. Betsy's going to enter that fight on the back end, so watch for that. Then Race has a really good shield here and a really good ultimate that just controls the fight. And Parang, he goes in, drops down, but then snaps back to reality and deals much damage with that AoE ulti. Trashy, good flash out. Frank survives, and here Kabi, I like this aggressive flash that he's doing. And then Race, also really good flash to go for the proc here. And then this bounce, just enough heals. Then heals from Nami and Nidalee combined. And the summoner spell heal looked like coming in from Sivir as well. Yeah. Buying him enough time to stay alive. And then suddenly he cleans up, so that was so close of a fight. Honestly, closer than it should have been. I think Spice overcommitted to the play on the Vlad, where they could have just backed off and forced the bait. But they played it out masterfully. And look at that team fight damage coming in. Sivir cleaning up in those exchanges. Ricochet ripping through the team of Rock Hat. Really just stunning in the end. And Cassidy, too, in those yeah, scenarios. Yeah, but look at Wunder here. The, 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 the one man that was carrying so hard, he did 500 damage in that fight. Because he landed uh, in a fight where he couldn't flank. He was forced to enter, and then then Arella just doesn't perform that well. She needs some space to really look for her timing and go in, isolate one carry, take him out. And well, I think you're right, Wonder. Determined to change her perception here as he hops in onto Betsy. Knows he can't win the 1v1, but when we look at that fight, he leaped right into chain CC and Airwax is going down. But look at Wonder, he always leaves himself an exit creep. He's really aware, always puts one creep on low HP, dashes in, and then always has an escape plan. As long as he's cute, he's a cool down. I think a rare moment of misjudgment from him in that last fight is to see them start to move forward for the Baron. Betsy hovering around, yeah. splice. They know better than to take this fight because they've got Cassidy on the bottom side pushing in for more. Tower now set to fall. 
So they made that move to draw them away from the bot lane tower to get cast and access, that access there. Then they could just do it again because they have double sustain. They don't have the biggest tank, but they can take damage from Baron for a few seconds, then back up and heal up. Well, now they're moving in for the Baron. They see the jungler bottom side. They know the Echo's there as well. A huge mistake coming in from Rockat. Cast him look for the TP flank. Chemo flight goes down. Mickey, will he drop? Baron, the bigger question. Drops for Splice in the end. Mickey manages to leave. Cast it in on the backside, buying time for the rest of his team. In comes the tidal wave. Not going to find purchase, but it will speed up Wonder, and it may send Rockat to their graves. Kavi moves forward. Senkux on the front lines. Burns through the Braum. Next Next up is the Echo Prank. Parallel Converge, it's not gonna come out. Snap back, moves in, some fancy footwork, but Wonder doesn't care. Sencox wants one more to round it out and splice, rip through Rockat. Yeah, they enter from all these different angles here, looking for the cleanup. Betsy, you gonna take one down on the grave? No, he pulls out, but splice, divide and conquer. Pressure on the bottom side of the map. Start Baron, back off, more pressure. Rockat forced to react to death, instant teleport. Force the Baron. Mickey does a great job peeling off Betsy too. And they take everything. They take four kills. They take a Baron. They barely take the tower in the bottom lane. That's still up. Splice right now in commanding position. Complete control of the rift. 5 to 14, a 10k gold lead just about backing them up. 9k as they maybe look to extend this one. They're gonna grab themselves the Ocean Drake. A nice consolation prize. On top of everything else they've been able to get. Kind of the, the bonus door prize here. A little bit more regeneration. And this is where things get nigh impossible for Yeah, and they also get it up, uh, uh, kind of on curve, you know? They take it down past uh, 29 minutes, which means they speed up the spawn of the Elder that they can take. Rocket doesn't have too many dragons themselves. So this is really good for Spice. They have uh, fallback plans in case it fails. It looked a little grim here when Wunder went in, but his mob popped, and there was enough damage in the chase. Senkos did so much work keeping Raze and Steelback busy, too. It's so hard to deal with a hypermobile cast, and look at the damage comes out. Yeah, no hesitation to flash yep. Rip Walk in there to burn through that AD carry. And Betsy, I mean, he lives in the end as we watch the back half of this replay, but you can just see how rough it is for him. Yeah, it's always, you know, flash off the W, or you, you dash in, then you auto and reset the auto attack with the W. Something cool you can do on casting in two is you can press ultimate first and flash over to carry on the damage, you know. Kind of like the equivalent of the extended Shadow Dash from Shen, yeah. just with Rift Walk damage. And, and the, the reason you do it that way is because you surprise people. It's, it's more actually comparable to Fizz hopping off his pole and then flashing. Mm -hmm. Because if you flash first and then can start the animation of Rift Walk, it's much more dodgeable or react flashable from your opponents. If you are flash yourself, you can really surprise them. So uh, look for that for the mark of a great cast and player. Yeah. Go back clearly caught off guard, does still have flash available for this next coming fight. And Rock Hat completely on the back foot, 1-3-1. One, all the way, Aston moving up to pressure at the top side and Parang holding on to what he can, but it yeah. does not look good. And conversions is down, which means right now Equilibrium Strikes will be going to be the setup here. Senkus dashes in, Ooh. dead. Parang gets knocked out. Splice now waiting for the next wave to break that tower, and they're still applying pressure on the bottom side. Trashy pushing in the mid lane as well. Rock at every single point on the map, every single lane. No point of contention for them as they do their best to hold on here. Baron Creeps coming from the mid lane to interrupt them. Betsy caught out. The action's going to continue here. Super Creeps moving down, zoning the team off this tower. Wonder ready with the TP if he needs to go in. There's the ultimate, going to hit two. Ray's trying to do what he can to disengage, but Trashy moving forward. Will he get burned down? Collateral damage, not enough from the grave. Senkux hops in. Ray's gets knocked down, and they're moving for more. Wonder now unkillable with that GA. They've set their sights on victory. Betsy wants to make the hero play, but the Ignite stops the regeneration he needs. They're setting their sights on the towers of the Nexus. They don't even care about the remaining members of Rock Cat. Wonder just wants some style points as Splice looked to close out this game. The Nexus is left open. The Nexus is set to fall. A little bit of fancy footwork and a few more blows secure the first win for Splice. Yeah, clean. Honestly, there were a couple rough points where it could have gone either way. But once Splice kind of maneuvered out of those situations by having really good map play and kind of shifting advantages around, they never stuck in the same lane too long, right? So, okay, we got a push here, you know? It's fine, let's move mid. Uh, we can't breach mid, let's move top, you know? Let's move yeah. jungle, vision in between. So they seem very much aware um, to play as a unit. So what we're talking about in, in the Fnatic series too, sometimes you have teams, you know, that play, it seems like they play like an RTS, you know? One guy controlling all five of these units, you know, moving them around for maximum uh, potential as opposed to everybody playing individually, you know, in a vacuum. That's sometimes what I feel like Rocket feels like.
And it's really rough, too, because we used to praise them so much for their late game team fighting. We always knew their early game was weak, and now it feels like there's there's not a whole lot left. There's not much left. They didn't even yeah, get the late get, game anymore. Yeah, they can't. The, the differences are too big, and even though we're like, okay, they're 2k gold down, they're still okay, suddenly one bad fight, one misplay, we saw jungler and top laner go bottom while Baron was on the table, and late game, you cannot afford to have that kind of decision making, uh, you know, mistakes around Baron. You, that's the moment that if you make a wrong move, the stakes just go up and yeah. up as you move forward in the game. Uh, if we're nitpicking, Splice could still work on their Baron baits. I think that Trinket survived for too long, uh, the blue one, and they need to bring some more pink wards to the table because it is defendable. Um, they also opted into some choke point fights against a team that is almost catered around fighting there. Mm. Echo Vladimir, they fare so well in these in these choke points. You know, the zone from uh, a parallel convergence combined with an Abram shield at the other end, you know, denying damage and the Abram ultimate so much more useful, especially since one of your key abilities to win these fights is the tidal wave, completely gets negated by the Braum shield. That's nitpicking, but I think Spice did a phenomenally good job. They were proactive, they were constantly looking for the play. Something like TSM is doing right now in North America, you know, it's like we don't care what we do, but we just want to be on the ball, not waiting for our opponents to do anything. Keep proactively playing the map, and it's working out. Absolutely. I mean, a slower early game for sure, but at the end of the day, they're still able to yeah. bust this out. And we look at some of the kind of the plays that we saw over the course of this map, around 15 minutes, the double kill. Coming in for Senkux on the bottom yeah. side of the map. Super clean play coming in here. And we watched that teleport come in, and it was just so well coordinated. Yeah, 30 seconds left on Parang's um, teleport. So they say, you know what? We're going to fire. Mickey came down from mid lane two, and he kind of swung that fight too. If it wasn't for his presence, it would have been a clean 2v3 that Wunder and Senkux would have lost because it would have been a turn from Rocket. But right now, Rocket looking for answers here. First big Vladimir. They get a lot of comfort champions like Steelback's a great Lucian player. Raze did okay on his. Brom, when you look at the parts individually, it's it all seems okay, but never more than that. And it never feels like Rocket is playing as a team. Which is so interesting because when we looked at Splice last year, we were like, this is a team that plays really well together, but all the parts are okay, and they were still finding... Oh, they seem so mediocre to us. But I, exactly. I, I, I'm so surprised that one single roster change has completely freed up Kabe. The fact that he went in for that... Like, one, Kabe would have never been in a position to flash in in that fight, and then he would have not went for the flash. I mean, either. the fight's just disgusting. Let's watch it one more time, because you're right. I mean, Kabe so aggressive on the front line, and Splice, I feel like no fear in this fight. They were all on the same page. Yeah, and this is what we're talking about. Like, this is a really bad spot to fight. Look at how quick Wunder actually drops you. Look at the zone from race two, you know, really great ultimate. People can't enter the fight because they're stuck around the corner. Parang has really good zone in his ultimate too. That's why people aren't stepping in. But then here, Kabe's like, you know what? Flash in, like this flash from race. You'll love it a lot. And then Kobe, heal one, heal two, heal three, and he cleans up that fight before dropping. And then we got the Yamato GIF. Yeah, He's I mean, too. we got, I feel like, a walking highlight of Yamato GIFs every time we see a sweet play. Well, he he turns to the camera. Yes. He's like, yeah, I'm nodding. Oh. <laughs> it's a great play. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course, you've seen a lot about us, but what about the other series happening over on EOS CS2? Let's take a quick chance to check in with G2 versus Giant.